uh, data collection method, we have seen that the data collection method, there are various ways of data collection methods in qualitative research. And the two main method is the in-depth interview or the key informant interview and the focus group discussion. There are other ways like the records, you can do the uh, participant observation, etc. So uh, just uh, think that you are driving a car on a highway to reach your holiday destination. So how will you plan and what will you wish for during this journey? So remember this and we'll see at the end what is the analogy of this driving a car on the highway and taking an interview for your project. So conducting an interview is like driving a car. So I, I, I hope all of you drive a car. And uh, it's uh, if you uh, are driving a car on highway, what all things you should take care to make your journey pleasure, pleasurable and accident free. So we'll see this analogy at the end. So conducting an interview, the first thing you have to come out from the mindset that you are doing a data collection. If you are going with this mindset, you always will be very guarded. You will behave like a data collector. So don't go with this mindset of data collection. Just think that you are the expert in this field and you are going to talk to people, talk to various kind of people. And that's why we said that initially, remember that axiology, what you think that is valuable and that is of your interest. So that interest should come from within. Then only you can collect a good, I mean, you can conduct a good interview. So you have to come out from the mindset of the data collection. The second thing, which I have said yesterday also, you have to memorize your interview guide. You cannot do like keeping a paper in front of you and then seeing the questions and then asking the questions to the participant, then again seeing the questions and asking the questions to the participant. You can have that as a reference in, and you can just go through it at the end, whether you have missed something or not, but you should remember the interview guide. And again, the framing of the questions, we said yesterday also that remember the broad topics and the framing of the questions, the order of the questions can be changed. It is not necessary that you have to ask the uh, questions in order the way it has been written in the interview guide. So if the participant is answering something, which the question is at the later part, you can again probe further to get the response. So memorizing the interview guide is the second thing. The next, next thing is for this memorization, you can practice this with your friends, with your juniors, with some other set of patients who you will not going to involve in your data uh, analysis. So you can do that pilot testing with the like uh, 10, approximately 10 number of people. They may have your friends. So the more you do it, there's no need to memorize because then automatically you will remember. And then you will uh, come in that mode of uh, taking an interview because for taking an interview, you have to be in that mode, constantly thinking about the topic, like doctor shopping, what are the possibility, keep talking to your friends regarding that, because they will also give you some insight. So 24 by 7, you are into that mode, like talking to people on this topic, that which is your central phenomena, which we talked yesterday, like what is your central phenomena of your research. So you should test and practice this interview guide with your friends, with some other set of patients or clients, with your juniors, so that you can remember it better. Now, this we have seen yesterday that if the participant asks for interview guide after giving consent, you can give this interview guide. Now, uh, what do you think regarding this uh, location of the interview? Yes, anyone? If I'm conducting an interview on medical students, and if I call them in my HOD room, will that place be a neutral place? All of you, please answer in the chat box. So 
so dr sandeep madhumita yes they are satyam shubhra they are saying no so it should be a neutral place like if you are conducting a interview of anm or asha and if you are calling them in probably the medical officer in charge room then definitely that place is not neutral so that's why we always say that the selection of place for conducting the interview it should be neutral and you they should not feel intimidated or they should not feel that it's a difference in power because they are at a lower level so they cannot say they don't have the freedom to say what they feel or what they perceive so the place of the and that you are the best person to judge this so in the field like especially in the focus group discussion also you should be very neutral like if you are conducting a interview in community and if there are people because in community we know we know that uh, there is a caste system in a village there are separate uh, you know uh, clusters of people and if you are inviting people of a different cluster to some other religious place maybe where where, where they don't want to go so then they will feel not they will not feel comfortable so that's why it should be a neutral place like we always usually we conduct if we have to conduct this in community you can conduct it at anganwadi because there everyone goes and the anganwadi is also one person from the community or you can conduct it at asha's home maybe at any place maybe at a uh, there is some community center in every village so you can do a focus group discussion there like we conducted uh, when the alcohol was banned in uh, bihar because you know that bihar is a dry state so we conducted approximately 54 fgd in the various district of bihar and uh, in many villages so th at that time we tried to look for a place like a community center maybe a school or maybe some uh, you know asha or the anganwadi place so that uh, people they are going there usually it's not a very specific place uh, which we have selected so this you should uh, keep uh, in mind that the selection of the place for this uh, interview should be very neutral then coming to recording this recording you have got a, these days uh, you should have a uh, we have a good recording devices and uh, you should check the battery it should have a battery backup also and the charging also so that uh, you should uh, just check before you go to take the interview that whether that device is charged or not whether the battery backup is there or not again if you have recorded something on the previous day you should just save it on the same day to your system otherwise there will not be space in that uh, device in that recording device so you should just empty that by saving partic that particular recording to your system and then just keep that much space so that it can accommodate two three interviews so that is important and again uh, you can have a double backup like you can record like what you we, we usually do we record with the phone and with the this thing also with one recorder so you have got two backup many times it happens that one recording is not very good so you can use the other recording because you are not going again to that participant so you should be very careful and there is a checklist you should always use that checklist whenever you are going to take any interview whether it is a in depth interview or a focus group discussion so that recording devices you should always check now uh, this is one question you have just started uh, you have uh, taken the consent for the interview and after you took the consent you just press the button and started recording is it correct yes or no or can't say okay so no answer is no you cannot do that so then what should you do if you don't if you can't start uh, recording what you should do incorrect so what is the correct way can someone guide me what is the correct way of doing that doing this ask the permission true so uh, what we do we 
take the permission, like the consent on uh, the paper also. And there also we, uh, it is written that it is going to be recorded. But again, when you press the recorder, that consent should be recorded in the recording also. So you can start saying that, yes, true. You can say that uh, I'm pressing this just to record the consent. So you can say that uh, this like background of the study, the study is about this, 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 and uh, whatever interview I will take that is going to be recorded. So do you agree with uh, giving, uh, are you giving the permission to be this, uh, this audio to be recorded? So then the participant will say yes or no. So if he says no, then you can just stop and then you can take the notes. If you think that that is a potential and a very good uh, response can come. And if he says yes, then you can continue with the that recording on and uh, you can start asking your interview guide uh, the questions which you have roughly framed as an interview guide. So the main uh, purpose of this question was that uh, that consent should also be audio recorded. Although you have taken a written consent also, but it should be audio recorded also. Now, always ask follow-up questions because follow-up questions, uh, what do we mean by follow-up questions? So it's like series when the person has answered something and you want clarification. So that we mean by the probing. Like in this case, consider yourself as an interviewer. So if you have asked this question, how the pa uh, patient dementia impacted the relationship dynamics in their family. So the person, the interviewee has answered, like my mom now requires 24 hour care and I am often stressed out about this and it is a putting a lot of strain on my marriage. So now what probe would you like to ask? Please type in the chat box. So you have to frame next question. So how it has affected your marriage? So yes, true. Any other? Because probe can all, how it has affected your marriage life. Anybody else would like to say? In what aspects your marriage are affected? Can you please elaborate through some instances? What type of care your mom needs? Mom needs, sorry. Yes, true. So your probe can be like daily routine. It can be on both the sentences. You can probe further regarding that 24-hour care, like what type of care which you have written, or you can probe regarding uh, the strain on my marriage. Again, you can probe regarding the stress. Like he has uh, said that I'm often stressed. So you can further probe regarding the, can you please clarify like what type of stress and what all happens to you when you feel that stress Okay, so why not hire a help, any constraint? So yes, maybe that question will come later on. But right now you want to probe this word or this sentence. So probing is uh, regarding the, uh, you know, uh, asking further detailing of that particular word or that particular sentence so that you can have a full, uh, uh, you know, response of the person, full perspective of the person. So this question like hiring a help it may come later part when you come to the solution or the other thing. And that also you will uh, ask him. You are not going to give suggestion for a help. So you may ask him later, like, what do you think? How you can lessen your stress? Uh, what are the ways in which you can reduce your stress or in which you can provide a better care to your mother? So solution you don't have to give. Please remember, Yesterday also I said that you have to behave like a lay person. Lay person means lay in not that context. You do, forget that you are a doctor, first thing. Because the moment you think that you are a doctor, we start giving a lot of advices and we start concluding because we think that we are thinking in their benefit. But no, just you know, hold yourself. Even if you wish uh, to feel like saying something, giving some ad advices, hold yourself. You ask from them, what do they feel like? So that's why I said that bracketing. 
so if like what Sun dr sundar has said if you say like why not hire a help again i am not keeping my mind away from that because i am thinking from my perspective that if that situation had been there with me i would have hired a help but no don't consider yourself uh, and uh, as a, as a, as an advice giver you have to explore and you just behave like an explorer so on every sentence like that was very good that what uh, what uh, you know type of strain it is putting on your marriage or can you further clarify on that strain or can you clarify on that stress what all is happening because of that or what all do you, your mom require in the 24 hour care so the sentence which the person says you have to pick those sentence to further clarify why because then only you will go deep down is in mind to understand his perspective maybe he also many time he also doesn't know why he is saying so but if in calm and patient manner if you encourage him to speak he will also speak and which he has not thought initially and that's the art of interviewing remember you go to a counselor there are uh, many therapeutic counselor you go to them and they just help you to think over some issue and to express themselves and by doing so that person relaxes the person who is over is saying something you know we say now that the doctor consultation we always talk of consultation that you should give that golden one minute to the your patients uh, try to listen them why it is so because you are helping them in letting out their venting out their feeling so you have to act as a good listener rather active listener that means you have to keep probing keep asking questions what do they mean by because see it's all about words we we it's qualitative research is a playing with words so like strain on my marriage we have all learned this you know all words are learned from the society since our childhood from our family even while uttering those words we are not very uh, cautious or we are not very uh, what to say conscious like what we are saying so that consciousness you have to bring that consciousness in the participant like what do they think by that strain on the marriage or then again solution comes later because you know for, i i always said that uh, first focus on what and how and then that why it has to come but it has to come at a later place so what and how and that we have seen yesterday that most of you has put this question of what and how in your interview guide and that was very wonderful they were very fantastic because you tried not to ask why many time this why the person uh, you know feels like you are a bit uh, probing in a negative sense and maybe if he doesn't want to say something why is like again i said it's, it's a cause effect so that's why many time they don't want to answer this why but again if uh, like simultaneously like if you have talked to that person for 20 minutes for 30 minutes and then if you start asking why then definitely he will answer but if you start i mean if you ask such why questions in the beginning he may not feel free to answer it to you so th this is the probing of a uh, you know uh, question uh, answer what answer you get this is the like a probing now again if you are a interviewer and if you are asking this question why do you prefer the auto injector over the intravenous injection so the person has answered the auto injector is more convenient because i can administer it at home and it it takes less time so now if i ask you people what further probe would uh, you like to have then what question can you ask based on this uh, response of the participant can you please type in the chat box auto injector so sandeep what do you want to know about the auto injector like do you want to know what type of auto injector it was or like cost of the auto injector or it is whether the 
he buys it or he gets okay how does it work how much time do you take to inject okay how much time does it exactly take okay good how do you use the auto injector that that's also good and again you can in uh, how much time does it save have you received any training for using auto injector so again if you ask this question have you received then answer will be yes and no so you should try not to ask a uh, you know open a close ended question we'll show you some transcript where there were so many close ended questions and ultimately you did not get any response so which quality and then you try to know why okay so again there are two key words here the auto injector is more convenient now you are thinking from your perspective regarding this convenience so now you can ask like what do you mean by convenience can you clarify how it is convenient to you or the second thing is like less time so you people have written that it takes less time so you can again ask like you people have written it that how much time it take or how much time it saves or what do you mean by less time can you clarify that so you have to take words or the leading uh, this thing lead from that response and you have to clarify it. what do they mean by that don't assume that auto injector is convenient because you know for the about the auto injector so you have to behave as if you don't know uh, what is a convenient what is convenience what is less time because time is also a very variable thing less time and more time now this is another question like what signs do caregiver observe this is the same questions which we saw on day 1 like how what and why so what signs do caregiver observe that tell them that okay so riya is writing the respondent has already said why it is convenient isn't it because of its less time maybe okay but again you can ask the reverse question like what are the problems with the iv injections remember we uh, said that uh, yesterday regarding the knee amputation question like if the knee amputation uh, if uh, it uh, how it has changed your life so you ask the question like if your knee has not been amputated is it more extra sick pain na to to bad archana na pankaj yes okay so uh, yes it it has already said so this this is oh, good but again you can ask like problem the reverse one like what were the problems you were facing or uh, can you clarify the problems which are associated with the iv injections so then you will get more response so that's why i said that the data collection tool in the qualitative is is it interview guide or it is the researcher itself please answer in the chat box the, 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 this was a pre test question also with you uh, people so the data collection tool it is the researcher yes because the interview guide cannot decide about these probing it can just give you some broad topics or sub questions which we discussed yesterday but the further probing and understanding and going into the deeper domain that's the art of the researcher the more you are with your participant into their context understanding maintaining your neutrality more response you will get so now if this is the question i know my daughter is having a hard time with her asthma when she is wheezing like this was the question what sign do caregiver observe that tell them their loved one is having asthma symptoms so now what further probe you would like to have what problem she will get how do you recognize the wheeze okay good any any other any other probe how do you know it's a wheeze how frequently when does she often wheeze yes uh, how do you recognize the wheezing what do you mean by hard time yes both these questions 
so how do you recognize and then again you can see a hard time so you know hard time is again it's a very uh, it's a word which will have a different meaning uh, to uh, i mean multiple reality so always try to have keep this mind that multiple reality word so hard time what that the, the participant meant by hard time okay so that you have to uh, clarify so that's the probing so now you know what a probing is so we have seen the few points that is doing an interview is like driving on a highway and we will see at uh, the analogy at the end that how this driving on the highway to reach a holiday destination and conducting a interview is similar then you have seen that you have to come out from the mindset of a data collector don't behave like a data collector you behave like you are the expert but simultaneously you have to expert of the topic but when you have gone to conduct the interview you have to keep aside your knowledge and don't judge or don't assume that what you know the participant is saying the same thing you know many times we say what we want to see we see that and what we want to hear we hear that that that's uh, the bias so you have to keep that bias and then the the role of this bracketing comes which we discussed yesterday also that whenever you are asking something try it. it's not very easy thing to do again but you can try to keep your uh, consciousness or your biases away while you are conducting the interview again you may ask about the same questions in a different way to near get the same answer like in this case uh, today we uh, this discussed regarding the uh, in uh, the convenience of the auto injector or inconvenience by the intravenous injection you you can if you are asking questions both the ways you will get the answer again do ask silly questions why should we ask silly questions many times you will feel that why i'm asking this this is such a foolish question such a silly question but you should always ask a silly question because whatever you are thinking silly may not be silly rapo building okay not only the rapo building silly means like if you are asking while probing or while interviewing in the main body when it's not the opening and closing session when you are conducting the actual interview respondent is more comfortable to get familiarized it is silly to us yes it's not uh, to get familiarized with the participant it's not to make them feel easy that silly again the multiple perspective silly word you are thinking it's silly but it may not be silly for the other person that's why i said that you may think that oh why i'm asking this question this is such a silly question like in this case uh, i'll give you a few more example in that uh, when i said na, that we asked one question to a girl regarding that hiv that how it is spread remember day one session and then uh, then that girl said that it is spread by touch so if i ask this question what do you mean by touch then i may sound silly to some other person or to myself also like everybody knows touch why i'm asking this like it is spread by touch like when we further inquired she meant that sex only by touch but because of the you know shyness she was not using that word and uh, so on so that's the silly uh, this thing uh, silly might sound whatever is silly that is silly according to our iq according to our experience according to our knowledge but that may not be silly for the other person so yes riya is right it is to know his reality and not to take his response for granted what we know the meaning of that word so that's why i said that you have to behave like a lay person if you will behave like a lay person then only you can ask silly question if you think that you are a doctor you know everything then then you are not going to ask silly question because you will think that why am i asking this so you have to come out from that mindset of uh, a doctor or a very senior person or you know a person who knows everything about the topic you know everything about the topic but you don't know the perspective of the person whom uh, you are interviewing that's why these things are very important 
now uh, read the reply of the participant and frame a silly questions to follow his or her reply okay so the participant the doctor came very late now please write in the chat box the person is saying that the doctor came very late how much have you waited how much late yes how much late true so now you want to clarify what what do we mean uh, what does he mean by very late how he defines very late maybe 10 minutes 20 minutes remember if we are in hurry if we are waiting for someone who is our, our near and dear one even the 5 minutes or 10 minutes wait seems to be very long so this late or this early that is also very subjective there might be a person who doesn't like to wait even for 30 seconds even for 1 minute and there can be a person who is so chill that he can wait for 3 hours and there is not going to be any problem so this late is also a very relative thing the concept of time or the you know being in time zone various time zone so that uh, that's the uh, silly question with uh, this sort of reply when then the doctor say i usually remain engaged in the department meetings after lunch now can you ask a silly question from this doctor please type in the chat box which meeting how do you remain engaged true which type of meetings are what do you mean uh, what do you usually have in lunch how often you are engaged what do you do at that time true true all of you are right and remember in qualitative no one is right or wrong everyone is right because it's the multiple perspective so there are multiple researcher also and all the researcher also have their perspective so in qualitative remember there is no nothing there is nothing wrong in any question in anything whatever you ask so there is no right or wrong everybody is right in their own perspective so true uh, all of you have answered it correctly from your perspective you can ask at what time uh, okay you can ask the time also and then again if you want to have clarification what type of meetings in the department after lunch and maybe regarding time regarding what he uh, you know what is his role like he said i re usually remain engaged so what is his role in those meeting what are the responsibilities all those stuff you can ask so the idea behind asking such silly questions is that you are not going to assume the participants key terminology as per your own understanding so you are not imposing your understanding on the participants because i said that qualitative is the world of words is the world of perception and all that perception we understand through words so words are the most important thing so clarification or the probing on those words on those concepts that is very important to know the perspective then comes the role of note taking so after the inter this note taking is important uh, many a times what we do in in depth interview also we go uh, two participants go to take the interview so one of them can keep on noting down the things and one of them can be engaged in the interview also if the other person is taking care of the recording whether the recording is on or not uh, whether there is no noise many time you will start uh, taking the interview somebody knocks at the door so few more people will come in so that if they you have got one other person with you who will take care of all those things apart from taking notes also it is usually desirable if it is not possible you can manage alone also but in that context that selection of the place should be uh, it is very important where there is no background noise many times we do fgd that's why conduction of fgd is very difficult because whenever you go in the field for fgd the participants which you have uh, called for the fgd other people will also sit 
and come now how what to say to them even if you ask them to go from there some other people will come and then it is like a lot of disturbance in the background the recording which you do that is also very not clear so this uh, selection of a place for in depth interview is very important it should be a place where there is a minimal uh, you know uh, interference is uh, there and uh, you can ask the other person to keep a tab on uh, not to uh, and not let uh, to enter any other person in that room so that you can talk comfortably for long period of time because this in depth interview takes around if if you are a very good interviewer and again if the respond uh, the person who is giving the interview the participant if he is very good in answering means he is very vocal and uh, by this uh, saying this term vocal you should always select the participant very purposely if you if the participant is not saying anything like uh, many time in rs we also we conducted interviews with the women who were like antenatal women or mothers so you will find they are not saying anything whenever you are asking something they'll say please ask to my husband please ask to my mother in law or i don't know anything or you only write whatever you feel like writing or they'll just smile so if you select such type of client however good you are or whatever tricks you try you are not going to get the response so selection of participant that's why we say that it's a purposive sample and you should initially judge uh, by the initial talk whether the person is going to talk or not and if she is or if he is not talking to you means not talking to you not you as such he is if he is not vocal then there's no point uh, spending even 20 minutes or 25 minutes uh, on that person because you are not getting uh, you will not get anything so that's the note taking then after the interview say thanks to the participant and uh, then only in the field or wherever you are took interview please write notes and reflections what have you felt and then you should try to give uh, updates also to the participants if possible it depends who are your participants if your participants are like medical officer in charge the reputed doctors the dio who are literate people and who will understand the implications of this project and finding you can give the one update to them but if they are like lay person again you can try giving it but in bihar we have seen that uh, it's not very useful or fruitful to give the updates to the uh, people who are there in your but definitely other stakeholders uh, we do give them updates so being a good interviewer means that you must have got the good knowledge now coming the traits of a good interviewer so with the good we we again know that you have done a good literature review you have written the whole protocol so you are the expert of that particular central phenomena you are knowledgeable so that is required for a good interviewee viewer and then you should have a semi structure guide that means you are structured and you must ask simple easy and short questions and yesterday we have seen the interview guide also you should not ask two questions at one point of time ask only one question and simple and easy and short question then you must give time to think to the participant if they are taking time to think help them to memorize give them time to finish and please do not interrupt in between what will happen if they are saying something so here we have shown you the response in a written form that's why it is easy for you to see the keywords and form the probe but when the participant is saying you have to form the probe then and there only simultaneously you don't have to interrupt also because you have to wait till the person has finished his talk so what you should do you should keep on writing those words on a piece of paper maybe on the interview guide on the back page of the interview guide itself like what you are going to ask next so that much alertness you should have the moment that person says something you don't have to interrupt so just note it down that particular word or a particular sentence because that is getting recorded you are not going to hear that recording now so how will you frame your probe questions so for framing that 
keep a pencil or pen with you keep on writing those words and once the person has finished then you can pose your question am i making myself clear you can imagine that process maybe when you will conduct the interview you will imagine what i am talking am i making myself clear some sense to you people i don't know whether you have understood this point or not okay akanksha is saying yes preeti is saying madhumita okay then i think it is clear to everyone like how to probe so to probe you have to keep on writing those words on a piece of paper or or that particular sentence or any questions which has uh, arisen at that point of time in your mind you immediately have to write that your helper is not going to help in that context why because he is arranging something else he is just looking for the connections he is uh, ensuring that nobody should enter in that room he is checking the battery backup whether the recording is happening or not so it's you who has to pay play active role you you cannot be dependent on the other person that he will help you to ask the probe questions so that alertness is very required and that focus is very required whenever you are conducting the interview and then you must listen attentively and empathize and then uh, you should be very open so whatever uh, response are given by the participants you have to remain flexible and you have to be, remain non judgmental when the participant is saying something again like a driver you are on the steering this thing so uh, you are on the steering so you know uh, what to find in the interview and where to use prompts and where to use probes again don't agree or disagree you have to be very plain in your facial expression and in your sentence by any means you are not going to show by your verbal gesture that yes yes i also think like that or yes yes you are very right no you have to keep your face like you are just a dumb person maybe i can say like many times we say na that person is so dumb not showing any facial expression whatever i am saying but you have to behave like a dumb there you don't have to disagree or agree keep your facial expression very simple yes if any ambiguity is there then you can again ask so you have to remember also what's already been said so do not repeat the question like don't uh, it's not like a class where you have missed the first part and then again you are asking the teacher what have you said now so be attentive be very focused and you have to remember that you have asked this uh, and don't ask again don't think that again the participant will come to know that you are not listening properly so don't ask what's already been said and in between keep paraphrasing that paraphrasing helps that person to understand that you are listening att attentively and you are interested in that in in her or in him so you have to keep paraphrasing in between so that it will help you in making a good repo also the the other person the participant he will come to know that you are interested in him and you are interested in his talk and he will talk further allow for a natural flow while interviewing but you have to cover all relevant topics also now coming to the uh, driving analogy so this battery of the recorder is like a fuel so if there is a low battery if there is a low fuel in your car what will happen it will it may stop at any point of time and you have to you know rush to the fuel station so your journey will not be comfortable so similarly if the battery backup of your recorder is low or if it is not charged there will be problem in the interview again if there is a, a clear uh, situation of the road so you can imagine the situation of the road with the process of the interview if the condition if the conduction of the interview is very good if the rapport between rather i should say the rapport between the interviewer and the interview is good it will be a very smooth interview 
so it will be like a clear road in your highway and you are driving without any hitch or without any barrier or without any stoppage so that rapport between the interviewer and the interviewee it is like a if it is smooth it is like a road it is like a condition of the road so if the condition of the road is good then your journey is very comfortable again the speed so the speed how you are asking the questions that is like getting a quality of narrative if you are too fast you will if you are driving too fast on the highway what will happen you will not be able to uh, feel the sceneries or the beauty of the nature which is across and similarly if you are conducting the interview very fast you will get poor narrative that means you did not enjoy the uh, this uh, journey again if it is very slow then the there will be too much information which you are not going to use again if it is a, a appropriate speed or a optimal speed of the car or the interview you will have a good uh, journey enjoyment and your narrative will also be good again if uh, they they like you in the highway you take tea break so similarly if you are taking the interview in between there might be a uh, cases when the participants has just digress from the main topic deviated from the main topic but again like it you take it like a tea break because on highway you just uh, stop at one point of time to refresh yourself and again start that journey so again you bring that participant back to the road and start your interview journey again again there can be natural call similarly in from the participants also you may have some narratives which are not related to research and like traffic jam in a highway so uh, participants also can pick mobile in between because these days you know mobiles are like we our life is with mobile so they may also pick phone especially if you are taking interview of doctors it's very difficult that for half an hour they will not pick calls so you have to have patience wait for their their uh, uh, call to finish and then again you can start your interview but in the meantime you should stop the recording when they have uh, taken some call you can stop that recorder and once that i mean not stop there is a button which is pause so just pause it and when they are back to your interview ready to talk to you again press that button and make that recorder on now there are some checklist for the process and quality monitoring of interviews and i'll show what are those checklist so before that checklist let me show that checklist first because then you will have to observe the uh, video which we will show is this checklist is in this demo file right i have not seen whether that checklist is so this is one checklist you can see is my screen is visible to you yes so one person can read this for me pooja pooja mundada can you read this madhumita i think pooja is not hearing ma'am am i audible yes you are audible okay so in the checklist serial number 1 it is to decide and fix mutually agreed date venue and time for interview after administrative approvals so like in this case if you are conducting an interview uh, how will you uh, uh, ensure this process like uh, if you have to uh, take the interview of a doctor how will you do that 
obviously you are going to call that person you have to ask for their appointment after the obviously the administrative if he's a government doctor you have to take the administrative approval of probably the medical superintendent also if he's going to give something so yes true madhumita then about the second point check the recorded battery status and memory Good. it's true and the third point is keep a notebook and a pen for note taking if face to face interview good number 4 is keep the hard copy of the interview guide mm -hmm. number 5 is introduce yourself and state the purpose of the study mm -hmm. number 6 is verify the concern to participant and ask if the respondent has any questions to ask mm -hmm. number 7 provide when you start inform when you start re recording mm -hmm. number 8 is provide adequate time to respond Mm -hmm. Number nine, show interest and curiosity. Mm -hmm. Number ten, in the uh, end, ask the exit question. Mm -hmm. Number eleven, debrief and summarize the main points. Mm -hmm. Number twelve, check the audio. Check that the audio is recorded properly. Mm -hmm. And number thirteen, store the consent form audio record transcript in a separate folder in a password protected computer system. okay thank you madhumita so you can see like there are many checklist which are available there are many checklist which are very long but we have tried to keep uh, these 13 important uh, questions in the checklist and you can just see the quality uh, before you start the interview and again while taking the interview you can just check uh, using this checklist what was the quality of the interview so after that i will just show you one interview and you have to comment uh, like uh, based on not even checklist then you can make your comments and you can keep on typing in the chat box uh, what what are your observations so let me share the sound hey my name is alison jones i understand that you've been to several chart trainings and i am the qualitative interviewer and so i'm interviewing people and asking them for feedback about the training and how it went for them and all of that so um is it okay if i talk with you about that yes of course great so um what is your name shay bloomer okay profession um i'm a nurse great and uh, how long have you been a nurse oh uh, i've been a nurse for 12 years okay um did you enjoy the training yes i did Would you say that you enjoyed it a little bit, a medium amount or a lot? I enjoyed it a lot. Great. Okay. And um did you learn something by the training? Yes, I did. Excellent. Okay. Um and would you recommend it to a friend? Yes, I would. Great. Um okay. So, can you give me an example of something you learned? Uh For example, um some pre people have learned that they may think that they're not discriminating and that they're very open and respectful of everybody, but then um when they actually get down to it and they go through the training and they understand that there are things that they that they actually do have some sort of biases in them and they may not have known it, but then the training helps them discover it and then just helps them be very self-reflective and that sort of thing. Do you think that maybe that's something that you learned in the training? Um certainly I think some of that was covered in the training. Um we also learned um about taking sexual history um and effectively taking a sexual mm. history, which is a sensitive topic and it's not something that I was trained in in my professional education mm -hmm. um we also learned about patient confidentiality and the importance of maintaining patient confidentiality in order to protect our patients mm -hmm. um and both of those i think were very relevant for me i'm sorry C can you say that last part again i got distracted i'm so sorry I, oh it's it's okay um i i believe i was talking about the how we talked about the importance of patient confidentiality and maintaining confidentiality of patient records Mm -hmm. to protect our patients. Um you've been talking a lot about what you learned. And now I'd like to ask you a little bit about what you've done differently. I mean, it's one thing to say we learned something, but then it can be quite another thing to actually try to do something differently. So, can you tell me anything that you may have done differently because of the training? Uh 
so what I'm doing differently since the training. There must be something that you did differently. I mean, think about it, you know, anything, because you, you mentioned these different things that you learned about. So can you think about, you know, maybe keeping your voice softer or spending a longer time with patients or um, being more empathetic than you were before, Any, anything like that. Do you think any of those may be things that you did differently? Um, yes, I'm, I'm sure they must think that I'm more empathetic than I was before. Great. Okay. So um, now let's talk about the training methodology. Do you think it was effective? Yes, it was. Great. And um, how was it effective? Well, it was a very interesting training. I was happy to be there. Great, but it helps you. It helps you learn and do your work differently. Well, um, perhaps. Now I'm a little bit confused because it seems that you're contradicting yourself. I. I think earlier you said that it helped you learn and you were doing something differently, but now you seem to be changing your mind. And so now I'm just very confused. Can you clarify for me whether you did something differently because you learned from the training or you didn't? Well, what I mean to say is that I think that I've always done my job well and I like my job and I think that I've always been respectful of my patients, but I think that there are certainly some things that I'm doing a bit better than I did before the training. Great, okay, great, thank you. Um, so that's all really good, thanks. So um, would you like us to provide you with more training on this or any other topic? Well, yes, actually, there are a number of different trainings that we could um, profit from at my facility and um, that I personally would like to attend. Um, I am very interested in a health administration course that's offered in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, at Howard University. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also very interested in um, having some uh, more in-depth training on diabetes, which of course is a large concern for us. Mm -hmm. um, I am also interested in taking some further training in um, care of um, pregnant women who are HIV positive. Um, they're so there are, I think, a number of, of trainings that would be of interest. Um, can you just say that again? I didn't get that last part. Um, pregnant women with uh, HIV positive? Okay. Um, okay. So um, what are some of the other problems at your facilities? Well, one of the, tr one of the concerns that we've been going around and around with the administration about is um, some of the water issues in the examination rooms. Um, the running water isn't working in some exam rooms, which limits the number mm -hmm. of rooms in which we can do certain procedures because the water's not running or, or there's not, um, uh, so, so that's one issue, that the water's not working in a number of the exam rooms. Um, I think there's also um, some communication issues, some systems issues between the, the pharmacy folks and the people who are in the wards. Um, and I, I think that um, it would be useful for uh, mm -hmm. the hospital if we were able to have some communication um, issues resolved between uh, the pharmacy and the ward. Hmm. Okay, great. Um, I think it's about time for us to wrap up. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Did I answer all your questions sufficiently? Yes, just great. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. So I think uh, we can look at the chat box, what all responses. So I think you have covered all the points. Uh, I, I was just watching what while you were, so closed questions. Yes, many times that she asked closed questions where the answer were like yes and no. The pace was too fast. Again, twice she asked like, I didn't listen. Can you please repeat? Yes, there was no eye contact, not listening many time interrupting in between. It was very obvious from the body language that she's not interested in whatever the participant is saying. And uh, again, a uh, lot of distractions by phone. And again, just looking at the paper most of the time. So most of the time you can see that. And that actually happens is the, if the interview guide is very long. And if you send some uh, like beginner to take the interview, uh, those like students or even the PG students, they just see the paper and then they, they uh, like uh, one question, they'll read it 
and then they ask question again they'll read it and then again they'll ask the question so that was there again uh, he uh, she was judging also because she said that uh, you seems to be contradicting your own statement so initially you said something else now you are saying something else so no you don't have to judge you don't have to say such negative things to the participant again sushri and riya they also said that uh, did not take consent before recording and uh, not given enough time to respond always looking at the interview guide checking watch phone and uh, seems distracted uh, i to i contact poor yes dismissal dismissal attitude at the end because she said now it's i think it's time to so uh, closing the interview don't have to say that now it's time you can ask you can just think of that time in your mind and then you can close the session by asking like do you want to add something else then prompting instead of probing true in the beginning and she was giving a lot of advices also and interviewer is doing for name sake not being critical okay so this was uh, all i think all the points so you should uh, take care while you are conducting a in depth interview uh, i i know um, you will not do that but many times we don't do it deliberately but unknowingly we also do such things like non verbal gesture or Uh, if you are not interested or if the participant is saying something which we doesn't uh, attract us so we may make our faces or the all those non verbal thing which uh, you can see here like eye contact uh, uh, flipping the papers and then seeing on the mobile phone constantly seeing on the watch talking to someone else so these things are uh, to be avoided when you take the interview Hey, my name is Allison Jones. I understand that you've been so to several chart is, trainings and I am the qualitative So now this is the second part where whether they have uh, shown the refined one when she uh, took care of all the points. interviewer and so I'm interviewing people and asking them for feedback about the training and how it went for them and all, all of that. So um is it okay if I talk with you about that? Yes, of course. Great. So um what is your name? Shay Bloomer. Okay, profession? Um I'm a nurse. Great. And uh how long have you been a nurse? Oh, uh, I've been a nurse for 12 years. Okay. Um did you enjoy the training? Yes, I did. Would you say that you enjoyed it a little bit, a medium amount or a lot? I enjoyed it a lot. Great. Okay. And um did you learn something by the training? Okay, okay. Yes, I did. Excellent. Okay. Um and would you recommend No, no, no. Hello, my name is Allison Jones. I understand that you've taken a series of chart training workshops. I'm doing qualitative evaluations about the training so we can learn more about how participants think about their training and what they've learned. Um so I'd like to ask you about your experience with the chart trainings. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um can you tell me your your name please? My name is Shay Bloomer. Shay Bloomer. Okay. Can I call you